بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد welcome back ذاكم الله خيرا this is another uh, round of program uh, مسجد أبو هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه وارضاه ذا الصحابي we have named behind uh, his name مسجد أبو هريرة in Columbus Ohio is presenting you uh, this program here we have جزاه الله خيرا أخونا الشيخ هرسات إمام خطيب and also a mentor of the youth in Masjid Abu Bakr and many masajids, Jazakallah khairan, in this town, welcome back. And um, Sheikh said, there are issues here we would like you to enlighten us and to tell us the, your insight and also the Islamic perspective. Um, the first one is uh, mental health. The issues of mental health what are the mental health is? We see many times that someone, someone who is having, having issue, issue with the mental health, health people, people will send, send him straight, straight to the masjid. And they, and they come into the masjid and they're saying that I need the Quran. Quran. Yes, Quran is hudan wa shifa. Uh, uh, Quran is huwa shifa lil mu'minin. It is a cure, it is a treatment of any and yeah, disease, disease that, that uh, the, person the person may have inside, inside and out. But, but sometimes, sometimes uh, Rasulullah said, 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 said to Dawu ayyuhal muslim Dawu, you know, seek, you know, a treatment. So, so what, what is the mental health? health is the, is the person who is uh, having, having issue or, uh, you know, ill, ill with this mental health, health issue, issue has to come all the time to the masjid and ask, uh, you know, Quran to be read on him, or there are other sources that you are sending to him, there are sources that you are advising to him, other medication, other treatment that you are sending to him. That's my first question. And I will come into, inshallah ta'ala, the second question, which is very important that I have. Welcome. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khairan. Dr. Muhammad, alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ba'd. I think, first of all, in the Somali context, you can talk about mental illness without definitely taking into consideration the social stigma which you just alluded to. Uh, Sheikh Mohammed, mental illness is just like a physical illness. People go to the doctor when they are physically unwell. Uh, so first and foremost, Ba'dallahi Azza wa Jal, after we put our trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and raise our hands to Allah, we take the asbab, which is we as you just said, the Prophet وسلم, said, Allah doesn't uh, bring down any disease, except Allah also brings, uh, you know, the experts in that field. And definitely Quran uh, instructs us to seek professionals. Uh, taking that into consideration, yes, physical, uh, mental illness is a physical illness. Um, if I am unwell physically, I go to the hospital i don't go to the masjid so there is a myth here that needs to be dispelled that needs to be exposed and people get uh, emotional when you say don't go to the masjid we work at a masjid me and dr muhammad and we know alhamdulillah the blessing of being at a masjid we also know as sheikh muhammad said that quran is a healing um, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa shifa'un lima fi sudur it heals the diseases of the heart uh, but there is a mis misunderstanding uh, Sheikh Muhammad where people subhanallah if you say for example uh, I have a blood pressure or I'm a diabetic or I have this and that they will say immediately go to the hospital uh, if you come to the masjid for example and as a khatib if I talk to my jama'ah and say if you have a blood pressure raise your hand half of them will raise their hand if you say, if you are a diabetic, please raise your hand, they will raise their hands. But if you say, if you are mentally challenged or if you have a mental illness, raise your hand, nobody will raise their hand. And this is what we call denial. They go into a denial mode. Mm. That is the problem. That is the problem. And that's actually the importance of this session, this halaqa. Uh, to the brother or the sister who is watching this program, if you have a mental illness you're not alone 
Um, there are millions in this world who are also suffering from mental illness. Uh, what we want to tell you first and foremost is that this is a test, the same way blood pressure or all of these other physical related illness are a test. So life itself is a test. First, we need to understand the definition of a life. Life is a test. Uh, we live in a world where our youth are wearing t-shirts that say life is a fun, enjoy it. Life is a game. No, life is a test. And Allah says in the Quran, الذي خلق الموتى والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عمل Allah created to test us and the reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, this brings me to my second point. If you are, if you have a mental illness, don't go to the masjid seeking for help. And I dare to say that and I know that this could put us into a trouble because again people are very emotional. If the Imam is certified, if he is qualified, go to the masjid. But if he's not qualified, if he's not certified, if the Imam or the Sheikh don't have any basic understanding of the signs of mental illness, the classification of mental illness, the definition of mental illness, please go to the doctor. That doesn't mean don't ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you. First, we direct you to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you. We also ask you to always read Quran on you and have people to read Quran on you. Quran is always a blessing. But the point here, what we are trying to say is seek a professional medical help. That's number one. Number two, uh, for the Imams or the faith leaders of the Sheikhs, our message to you is when a young sister comes to you and says to you, I have a depression. If you say to her, your Iman is weak, you already made her more depressed. Yeah. You didn't help her. You almost destroyed her. So this is a message to our fellow Imams and Shuyukhs. Uh, when a mother comes to you and says to you that I have a depression or I have a mental illness, and if you say to her, A'udhu Billah Min Shaitan Rajim, your Iman is Ta'if, you don't read Quran, you're not close to Allah, you destroyed her. The best thing to do is what uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us to do, which is to direct people to people who help her, which is what Islam instructs us, which is to seek for a professional help. Masha'Allah. So that is the definition of a mental illness. It's just like a physical illness. And to answer your second question, when people have a f mental illness, uh, they should go to a medical profession uh, the same way they go to the hospital when they have a physical illness, unless and until the Imam is qualified for that or certified for that. I know Brother Muhammad has a background of mental illness. My degree is biochemistry and microbiology. We happen to be people who read these things, but some of our Imams and Shuyukhis unfortunately are not trained in this, so they might make the situation much worse than it was before. In related to that, uh, there was a brother who was uh, having issues with uh, a, a mental uh, problem. He used to come to the masjid, and he was coming to the masjid, and he was saying that, you know, uh, he's not well, uh, his, think, his thoughts are very dangerous, and sometimes he's saying that, I'm not a Muslim, uh, he says that I can't even open the Quran, I cannot read it. And uh, he has like a very, you know, keep coming back thoughts. So what do you, we ask him, what do you need? He says, I need the Quran. And I know at the moment that he talked to us, he don't need the Quran, but he needs to see a medical uh, professional. So, you know, we tried him, you know, a couple of days to read on him the Quran. And then the other day we said, hey, how you feel now? He said, oh, Allah, the same thing, I have to sell my houses, I have to do this, I have to do that. I told him, now listen, go to the doctor and ask him to maybe uh, just uh, do some assessment on you. I was suspecting that he has something called OCD, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. So go ahead and just see. Well, alhamdulillah, he took my advice. He went to the uh, doctor. He sat down with them. And then that's what they diagnosed him. 
exactly. They gave him the medicine. And then he came back in a week. He said, Wallahi, you know, Alhamdulillah, he was feeling great. I mean, we take big, big, big parts of his health. He changed it. He completely calmed down. All the dangerous thoughts was, you know, disappeared. So that is what sometimes is happening. Many divorces are happening because of this OCD thing. Many uh, mothers and, you know, the fathers are ailing on this. So one of my colleagues, he told me that, he's a, a medical professional, he told me that, hey, listen, you know, many uh, lawyers, you know, uh, low professionals, they take this medicine. They have the disease. Many doctors do the same thing. Many judges do the same thing. They have this problem. But no one just takes, no one swallows and just, you know, uh, goes into his room or his isolated place and this and that. So, you know, that's sometimes what's happening. And alhamdulillah, and uh, many brothers, when we give them the advice, they took the advice. But the sisters are sometimes it's very hard-headed, maybe. Allahu alam. Some may not take, some they think that they need a, a Quran. And then they go to other masjid, they go to other masjid, they go to other masjid. Which takes, you know, a longer time. So our question here, inshallah ta'ala, my question here is something called social stigma. The person may be having issues of mental health, maybe having issues of drug or substance abuse. He don't have help and someone, he don't have anybody comes across to him and helping him. So, and, you know, it's kind of like taboo. He don't want to talk about this. And he don't want to say anything about this. He don't want to seek. Because some mothers or fathers may, if they go to the doctor, and if they diagnosed it with a mental issue or mental health, mental problem, you know, the, they think that their kids will be taken away. Okay? They will be recorded into the system. And they don't want to, you know, share with it. So what is your advice for that? And how this social stigma can affect socially and in perspective of religious religion? Zakallahu khair. Allahu khair. And Dr. Muhammad, uh, you have raised really amazing points. And inshallah ta'ala, let's reflect on them. Before we answer those questions, again, uh, for those of you brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, if you think you are mentally challenged or you have a mental illness, please keep in mind you're not alone. Uh, come to us, uh, especially contact Sheikh Mohammed. Um, we are there for you. Islam commands us to lend a helping hand, a brotherly, sisterly, loving hand to all of you. Uh, Brother Mohammed, you really raising an important uh, uh, question. That brother who said, all I need is Quran, uh, first of all, uh, sociology teaches us that the environment in which you live dictates how you lead your life. Everyone around him told him, if you have mental illness, all you need is Quran or go to the masjid. So we can't blame him. That is our fault. That is how the society programmed him. And number two, uh, what you did or the way you really approached him, you, you, it was really amazing. And that really is what we need today, outreach, to talk to them, to reach out to them to say, I'm here to help you. And this reminds me an amazing story about uh, Ibn Abbas, Ibn Amir Rasulullah, the cousin of Papa Sallallahu Alaihi Subhanallah, more than 1400 years ago, the students, the companions of the Prophet, uh, 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 taught us how to deal with the people who are depressed. Um, because they say 80% uh, of the people who commit suicide had a depression. That's what they say. They also say 80% of people who are depressed are looking for someone to talk to them. This is an authentic study. It was said Ibn Abbas was one day in the masjid and someone came and this person, subhanAllah, he was going through a lot. And Ibn Abbas, he looks at his face and this is really amazing. Most of the time, uh, for example, you and I are from masajids where people were coming 
and praying next to each other for let's say 15 years, 20 years and we never ask our brothers and sisters how are you doing, how are the family, what is your situation, you know that was supposed to be the intention of the jama'ah or coming together. So Ibn Abbas looks at this man and he sees that this person is going through a lot and he, sees, he says to him uh, yani in the Arak, I, it looks like uh, you are so stressed. What's wrong with you? And this person says to him, uh, Ibn Abbas, you don't know what I'm going through. I have to pay back a lot of money to different people. So this person, subhanAllah, was immersed in a loan. You know, he borrowed so much money and we know that, you know, money could give you a stress. So Ibn Abbas didn't say to him, sit down, read to juz, pray to rag'ah. Allah will take care of you. He didn't say that. Rather, he said, I will go with you and speak on your behalf and advocate on your behalf to the people who are waiting the money from you. SubhanAllah, this is what I think you did and this is what we need, outreach. Ibn Abbas did not say to this, he didn't judge him and say, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you this money. Sit down, read Quran, don't worry about them. But he stood up and he says to him, let me go with you, I will advocate on your behalf, I will talk to these people. And we know the position of Ibn Abbas, of course, in the Umar, right? It is said in the narration that someone says to him, and Ibn Abbas, uh, you are mu'takif, and you're doing i'tikaf, did you forget, how can you go? And he says to him, uh, and he says to him, keep in, uh, and he says to him, uskut, uh, keep quiet. For wallahi, and I've heard the Prophet Sallallahu saying, and for you to go out and take care of the hajj of your brother, right, sister, better than that you do itikaf at the masjid of the Prophet. I mean, look at that. This was the understanding of the Sahaba. So Ibn Abbas stood up and then Subhanallah approached the person, took him out, helped him first, calmed him psychologically. Then he taught him this dua. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-huzni wa'udhu bika. Yani you all know the famous dua. So this really teaches us an interesting uh, 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 lesson. Number one, uh, we don't judge the people. This was the understanding of the Sahaba. Ibn Abbas could have said, read Quran, uh, or brother, I'm doing the itikaf, I can't go anywhere. But subhanAllah, his understanding of Islam was so deep, he approached him, did an outreach for him, advocated on his behalf, then taught him the dua. And it's an amazing story. So the social stigma is what destroys our people. Uh, the second thing I want to mention is that uh, we need to tell the people, we need to tell the people that this is like a physical illness. You don't have to uh, feel taboo about it. You don't have to hide it. Come out and talk to the people. Unfortunately, our society judge the people. We call people names and we drive the people away from the society and away from the masjid. And this is not the tradition of all the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. My colleague, my, colleague, my friend, my friend uh, and our brother, brother Sheikh Hussain, may Allah reward, Allah reward him for coming, coming today, today and, uh, and taking a part and also, also just giving, giving us uh, so uh, many insight, so many, insight, insight, so many perspectives, so many perspectives in, terms in terms of religion, in terms of, religion, of, in terms of uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, his professionality. Uh, May Allah reward him for that. Jazakum Allah khairan. Until we meet next time, Jazakum Allah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.